my research focuses on developing materials for use in extreme environments. And when I say extreme environments, I mean aerothermal heating environments for application in aerospace vehicles that have to withstand high heat flux and high thermal loading while maintaining their strength and uh, oxidation resistant properties. This is a shuttle tile from an actual NASA shuttle and this is the black underbelly of the acreage type of TPS structure that is painted black for emissivity purposes. But what is on inside this tile is actually a ceramic and it's a ceramic that is uh, silica fibers compressed into a little brick like this and it's about 98 percent air so it's a highly porous structure and if you were to look at just the material itself this is what it looks like the material itself can withstand about 15 1600 degrees C Celsius and upon re-entry of the shuttle the temperature that it sees uh, are lower than the, the melting temperature of this uh, oxide material. The materials that we're working with have melting temperatures greater than 3,000 degrees C Celsius. So the need for these materials lies with the desire to make aerospace vehicles that go faster and are more maneuverable. Therefore, they generate a higher heat load at those sharp edges. So this has become of great interest to a lot of people, especially um, Air Force, and they are one of the main funders of my research. In addition, the National Science Foundation also sees this as an enabling technology, uh, a new frontier in science where I'm actually trying to develop materials that have these high temperature resistant properties. So the reason why these materials are so important to everybody is because the technology that's developed to create a next generation re-entry uh, vehicle that comes from, from space is that the materials operate at a higher temperature. Therefore, we can build a more efficient airplane that could operate at hypersonic speeds and take you from LA to New York in 30 minutes. I can study the fundamental processing science of how to make these materials. I can test them under um, certain temperature regimes. However, I cannot duplicate in my lab, nor can anybody on this planet, the exact aerothermal heating loads that a vehicle experiences in flight. So then the challenge becomes, how can we accurately reproduce relevant environments that these vehicles see in flight on land? So we have developed test methods in our lab that test radiative, convective heating mechanisms, heat flux, and temperature at the surface of the specimen. The work that I do is extremely challenging. So if it was easy, I probably would not be interested, and that's just my personality. I recruit very uh, selectively uh, for students to join my group because, you know, we do work on hard problems, and if it's too hard, and then it, it may not be for you, you know? So you have to have the attitude that, you know, I don't mind not knowing the answer. I don't mind not ever knowing what the answer could be, but I'm gonna work, you know, to my best, the best of my ability to figure out why. I would say that a lot of the uh, work that we're doing is fundamental, never been done before research. And I don't know how many people uh, have the privilege to do that at a university. And I think the role of our universities is to innovate. Because once you get out into industry, you need, you need to have people in place in industry that can then transform that innovative technology into the application. Because universities are not designed to do that. I owe a lot of uh, gratitude to the University of Arizona for helping to uh, get me off to such a productive start as a new junior faculty to help launch my program in high temperature materials and put Tucson and University of Arizona on the map.